What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Vow Files Ask Nick episode. I am your host, Nick, joined by my producer, Chrissy. Chrissy, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. You know, I always say we have special episodes, but uh, this one in particular, I am looking forward to. Uh, Rachel Lindsay, my dear friend, is joining us, and she's going to help us uh, with the Ask Nick. She's always very good at giving her thoughts and, uh, and opinions on topics, and so she'll be joining us, as well as, as I mentioned last week, uh, you know, talking about some of the recent events that's been out there, and specifically, um, you know, just kind of some cultural questions, I guess, that is the way to, to talk <laughs> about it, and, uh, you know, try to share some insights so, again, we can all become, you know, more uh, educated on, on things. So how are you doing, Lindsay? Uh, <laughs> Hi. Hi. Do you know me or not? I, I know. know. <laughs> I've had four cups of coffee. Hi, how you doing, Rachel? I'm good. Listen, I always tell people when you have two first names, you just learn to go by both. It's just comes Has that happened it. a lot? All the time. People call me Lindsay all the time. I never correct them because that is I my name. the first time I've ever done that. I, it's okay. It's okay. I wonder what you call me if you had five cups of coffee. Oof. No. <laughs> Brian wouldn't want to know. <laughs> no, I'm um, good. I'm good. I'm a little exhausted. As you I was going to say, like, it's Thank funny. I, I, the podcast uh, where I shared my comments about Hannah came out last night. We're recording this on Wednesday. And I feel exhausted just from like the response. The response has been, you know, mostly positive. It's been, it, uh, but then, I, and then I thought to myself this morning, if I feel exhausted, I can only imagine what Rachel feels like. And quite honestly, other people of color who I'm uh, deal with this shit constantly. Constantly. Um, I, I have watch- to say what you said was really great. Oh, I, well, I, I, I appreciate really, it. It, it was like everything you said, I was just like, yes, I uh, needed to hear it. And thank well, you for saying something. Well, thank you. Um, you know, it's funny. I watched your Instagram live on Sunday when you went on and kind of first addressed the stuff with Hannah. And the fr- the thing that resonated with me the most is when uh, you talked about just how tired you are of ha- feeling like this burden falls on you, now, specifically in, in Bachelor Nation, as we say, with some of the alumni. And I felt guilty. You know, it's like one of those things you think about where it's just like, and I even said like, well, let's see what Rachel has to say. Um, (laughs) I also think that that's become my brand too. Sure. (laughs) And listen, you embrace it. uh, It is, and you're good at it. And you're, you're, uh, you're insightful, uh, obviously about the topic, but at the same time, I, I can imagine it does get exhausting. And there is this, I guess, confusion or discomfort with the idea of talking about these topics when they do come up. And it's not as if every person in Bachelor Nation needs to sit here and discuss it, but I think we need to, again, continue to be open to having these conversations. As I said, try to be just become allies and just it, be open to admit when you say, hey, I'm, I feel like I'm a little ignorant on this topic. Um, are you willing to help educate me where can I go to re- research? Like, you know, where can I do my own homework and things like that? But it's just something that like you, you talked about and it's just like, I kind of took it as a challenge on myself and I hope other people, not just in Bachelor Nation, but everyone watching that was just like, hey, I, I, I want to be a friend to, to anyone, especially my minority friends and people out there who have to deal with this and not just like uh, showing outrage when these terrible atrocities, you know, do happen you know, and, and just try to be an ally to, to people out there and, and continue to support one another. And uh, uh, I appreciate you, you, you know, bringing that to light and, and challenging all of us to, to do that as well. Yeah, I think, thank you for that. And I think also it's, it's the reason I said when I first started my live and I was like, I'm so tired it was two folds, right? I'm tired of, of always having to be the one, but, but I was actually really tired because all day I had been dealing with it behind closed doors. It wasn't uh, a situation where I just woke up and was like, Hey, I'm going to go on live. And this is, and this is what I got to say. I really tried to handle it a different way. And there's just so much people don't know and didn't see. And by the time I got on live, I was tired. 
I can imagine. Uh, how much uh, are you willing to kind of share and kind of put into context? I know you mentioned on your live that you had reached out to Hannah. Um, and it sounded like at that time, at point, maybe you're just offering advice, but it's, you know, there's been things out there that have been leaked and, you know, how much of that is accurate or not accurate. Are you able to share any bit about that conversation? Yeah. Originally in my live, I was hesitant to talk about it because I was trying to not make my live just about Hannah. I really wanted people to see the gravity and then the na- talk about the nature of that word and the history of it. Um, but I have to, of course, reference why I'm even talking about it. Sure. I was trying to preserve that. But what has come from that has been that somehow I was f- upset because Hannah didn't apologize the way that I wanted her to. I was trying to force her to do something. I was bullying her. These are terms that have come up. And it just yeah. blows my mind that some people think this. So I feel now that I have to kind of set the record straight on some things. So I think there was an ET article that came out uh, that was like sources said. And one of the things that it said was that I had a conversation with Hannah. I didn't have a conversation. I had multiple conversations over the phone, text, and direct messages. Um, another thing that the article said that was wrong was that Hannah never committed to a live. That's not true. And I think that's what became so taxing on me is that when Hannah and I talked, she wanted to know what my thought was as to what she should do. She said, I want to ask you. And she was very remorseful. She was very upset. She was mm-hmm. embarrassed. She was admitting she was wrong. And she said she wanted to go on a live and she was going to go first and then bring me on. Twice, she got off the phone with me to tell me, okay, I'm going to go do it. I'm just going to go get ready. Hours later, nothing. Then we would talk on the phone. And then hours later, nothing again until it was ultimately decided that she wanted to do a statement. And I think what people also have to understand in the background of that is that Hannah, the reason it disappointed me so much that Hannah decided to give a statement is because, quote, her words, a statement would be insincere. Hannah said that. It felt icky to give a statement. Um, And I believed her when she said it. And it was her team that was advising her to give a statement. And she said in her heart, she didn't feel it was that way. And she felt that God had wanted her to use her platform for a bigger purpose. And she was going to step up and do that. So then to see her ultimately text me and say, I'm going to give a statement was extremely disappointing because you yourself said that that was insincere. So why did you therefore decide to do an insincere action? I'm very confused by that. Yeah. I mean, and again, you know, I... I have this like problem of always playing devil's advocate and just trying to, in confusion, put myself in other person's shoes. Sure. I, I can get why Hannah's scared and worried. And certainly she, you know, she hires these publicists for a reason to be advised on these things, but she is their boss. And at the end of the day, you do have to, I think what you said uh, on your live is like, this has to come from your heart and it certainly needs to look like it comes from your heart. And I'm not a publicist, but if I'm advising someone, it's just like, listen, you, you can't have people thinking it's written by us. And everyone, everyone knows it was written by her team. Yeah. Um, and but that is it. I, I did know her heart. She was upset. She, and she wanted to speak on camera because she wanted people to understand where she was coming from. And I believed her with that. And I, that's why I was like, I will support you. Cause this isn't, you should speak, not me. It should be you speaking. Here we are talking about it, right? Mm-hmm. And, it, and last night, I, I've been called a bully. It's like that that's the seems to be the, why are we bullying Hannah? We're not, like, you know why we're talking about it right now? Because Hannah still, to this day, and it's Wednesday morning, refuses to. And it's frustrating that we're sitting there having a conversation about this, you know? I, I don't know how that live would have gone, but my gut tells me uh, it could have been a very powerful and it a very impactful thing. And I think it would have been, over. It would have been a mute point. I certainly wouldn't have spent 20 minutes talking about it on last week's episode. Um, I, if I did talk about it, I would talk about like, you know what? Hannah fucked up. It was wrong, but good for her for having some courage and good for Lindsay, uh, Rachel Lindsay <laughs> for extending an olive branch that you didn't need to do. You know, like. But I felt like that's what you do, you know. And, and to your point, the reason you address it publicly 
that we talk about it publicly is because it happened publicly, right? If this happened behind closed doors, it would be a conversation we had and that would be the end of it. And I think people think, you know, it, it, it's just crazy the things that people say, but it, it could have been a bigger conversation of, gosh, Hannah and Rachel came together to talk about race, to address an issue. Yeah, and we're really not, positive. And we aren't seen as close. And so it was more of, that's why I said, let me not just get on live. Let me reach out to her and let her know that this is disappointing because you do have this platform. People do think, hold you in high regard and think, and I think more of you than this. And, and to know what her heart was and then for her to ultimately hide behind a statement is what was so disappointing. Yeah, I mean... As of now, and I'll just repeat it, as of now, all we've had from Hannah is uh, this weird apology on her Instagram Live shortly after being called out, which I'm sure she felt scared and confused and awkward. And the the, the giggling through the apology I'm, probably comes from that. I understand that. But her gut reaction was to blame her brother. Yeah. That's like, you know, how you handle things in the moment is indicative of your character. And like, so again, I, we're not like, it's we're just trying, you know, we're, people have been kind of pleading with her to be like, come on, do, do something different. Like stop, you know? Uh, and so here we are talking about it and more about the topic because like no one likes fucking talking about this, you know, but we are dealing with real issues out there and you sometimes feel damned if you do damned, if you don't, uh, we don't like talking about this, but you know, we do feel grateful for having this platform and you know what? We get to do a lot of dumb things and and post yeah. ads and and be goofy and silly, but there is a responsibility that we have, given this gift uh, of an audience and a fan base, to like try to sometimes have tough conversations, and like no one likes to be throwing in anyone under the bus. I still hope that Hannah makes the most of this, but like this. I do too. This approach is is baffling, it's confusing, and every day and every moment that goes by, it just reads as more and more insincere. And to hear that you had this conversation with her about her 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 sincerity and her her, her sadness behind what she did to only like put something out there is it makes me more disappointed. Um, yeah, the statement you just made is so powerful. How people handle things in the moment is indicative of their character, and. I remember saying to her, of course, it's scary to get on live and make this statement, but how noble will it be of you yeah. to say I was wrong? Instead, you gave us an apology that only lasted 24 hours. You didn't even have the audacity to post it on your feed to say, I am representative of this statement. This is who, this is what I stand for. This is what I believe. This is who I am, where it stands there, you know, on your feed forever, as opposed to disappearing in 24 hours into the ether, never to be seen again. Yeah, it's a it's a bummer. I do appreciate you giving some context around that. Uh, again, for all the Hannah Brown fans listening, I, I'm sorry if you were upset. We're not trying to pile on. We're, we're not trying to bully her. But there is uh, a responsibility here that Hannah needs to do. And again, like the yeah. reason why I, I shared some context about the relationship that Hannah has or the lack thereof with other people in Batra Nation is not to like talk shit. It's just that we're sitting here getting a bunch of comments and a bunch of DMs being like, why aren't you defending your friend? Why don't you have Hannah's back? Why is everyone alienating Hannah? And like the truth is, the alienation was on the other side long before and people like you are still reaching out, extending this olive branch. And it's just like, that's where I think we get frustrated and we get defensive. And it's just like, you know, um, and that's I warned frustrating. her about this. I actually warned her. I said, you're the longer you sit, your fans are going to speak for you. You need to speak out. And I was like, your fans are intense and you really need to say something because what they're saying now, is that what you believe? And she said, no. And I said, is that what you stand for? She said, no. And I said, that's why you have to come out and address it and stop allowing people to speak for you and say that they know your heart. No, like they need to hear you. They need to hear from you so they know what you what you represent. Masterclass. Well, people, uh, you know we've talked about Masterclass before. Uh, this is such a, a, a cool product. I told you that I, uh, I've been using Masterclass since Christmas. I got it for my brother-in-law as a gift, and then I got it for myself. It was one of those like amazing gifts that I was like, I actually I really want it, so I'll just get it for him too. Uh, you've probably seen it out there. Uh, what a great time to, to get Masterclass. You're probably staying inside more, probably, hopefully. 
Um, and if you've ever wondered about, you know, things you want to get into, cooking, uh, photography, uh, making mov movies, uh, comedy, uh, those types of classes with some of the, the best people that could possibly teach you are available at Masterclass. Uh, Chris Voss, The Auto Negotiation, Bobby Brown, Makeup and Beauty. Uh, I'm watching, I'm, I'm uh, currently in the Masterclass of Neil deGrasse Tyson, Scientific Thinking and Communication, which is super fascinating. Uh, it's so cool because like you really are in the room with these uh, experts, the leaders in their field, and uh, it's, in, it's in very uh, comprehensive, uh, it's very intimate, and it's very informative, and I'm, I'm having so much fun doing it. It's been a, an absolute ton of fun. I know Chrissy. I think the biggest thing she's most excited about of being part of the Vile Files is now she's jumping on Masterclass. When you say that, Chris? <laughs> I would say that. I've always wanted to try it, so now I have the opportunity to do it. And I'm so excited. I'm really into like the outdoors and being outside. So for me, there's a Jimmy Chin class uh, for his outdoor photography. Do you know Jimmy Chin? Uh, I'm not familiar with him. I've done I've done a photography one, but now I have not done that one. I mean, they Jimmy have a ton. Yeah, they have yeah. a ton of different options. He did free solo. Yeah. That documentary free solo, so it'll be cool. Ooh, so yeah, if you've been interested in TV writing, uh, game design, and investigative journalism, I mean, literally the list goes on, and it's they have this. Um, it, it's shocking, like the people they have like teaching in these classes. So uh, it's absolutely uh, very, very cool. I highly recommend you check it out. So get unlimited access, unlimited access to every masterclass they have, and as a Vile File listener, you'll get fifteen percent off the annual Access All Access Pass. Go to masterclass.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's masterclass.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off Masterclass. Modern fertility. Well, people, uh, if you're staying inside, hopefully you're having a lot more sex and maybe you're thinking, hey, I'll have a quarantine baby. I don't know. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, obviously family planning is always very important. It's always... A sensitive issue and sometimes it can be very costly and with modern fertility they make uh, that process a lot easier uh intimate and a lot more affordable um so yeah uh listen uh there's always a lot of unknowns when it comes to family planning and if you can get more information on how to do that uh i think it, we're, you're all the better um anything to add as a woman chrissy to uh our wonderful friends at modern fertility i think what they say over at uh, modern fertility is that knowledge is power so when you have more you can make better decisions and so i have a lot of friends that are planning their families now and this is a great tool for help them absolutely I, it's actually really fun to uh, get some of our uh, listeners who have have used modern fertility and hear some of their stories it's very exciting um, and it's really helped them, you know, start their family with getting that information they have and saving a ton of money. I mean, sometimes this thing, these things cost a thousand dollars and with modern fertility right now, modern fertility listeners, uh, can get uh, $20 off their test kit when they go to modernfertility.com slash V I A L L. So that means it ends up getting this test kit for $139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. Plus, you don't have to go to a doctor's office, which is like amazing. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Modernfertility.com slash V-I-A-L-L. And, and you know what else bothers me, Nick, too, is how they're like, you should be supporting your fellow, fellow bachelor nation person. Or I get a lot of women should be supporting women. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm bowling I, women now because I, it's just like. But I, what I, else I, do you see when you see me? I'm black. So I'm black. I'm black first. And then I'm a woman. I am a black woman. It's not about women supporting women. It's about me representing myself as a black woman. And it is a derogatory term that is used against to oppress black people. So how as being a black person, do I not speak out about this? It yeah. just baffles my mind. You should be showing Hannah Grace. What, what, why isn't that used on the flip side of things? You know, it's, it's crazy. I, I somebody said to me, Nick. I I, I cause sometimes I'll, I'll I'll say, you know what? Let me respond to someone. And I was responding to someone in my DMs, and I was explaining something, and they said, "Well, Hannah, her brain wasn't programmed to say the f word, so that's why she skipped over saying the f word. But she never uses the n word, so her brain just said it." Because it's not in her book. I was like, what is <laughs> wrong that, with people? That, that, uh, <laughs> that, that the logic, you. there's some holes in that uh, train <laughs> of thought, I'll just say. 
but it's like, you know, so let's transition to the bigger conversation, the bigger topic. And you know, it's like, it's almost like, again, it's not like when we're sitting here saying me, you know, white guy being like, guys, white people, stop fighting this fight. Just don't mm-hmm. say it. There's no argument. Like, is it that yeah. hard? Do you really want to die on this hill? Come yeah. on. Like, and yet I'm just shocked by the, uh, the number of people, uh, who are willing to publicly, you know, put on their social, like, you know, their profile, their picture, it's not even private and being like, no, I want to argue this point. And I'm just like, why? I don't understand, you know, this whole like, well, don't use it. No one should use it, blah, blah, blah. Can you again, provide some context for the people listening on, on the use of the N word, why black people say it in their community, uh, why artists uh, choose to say it, uh, why, you know, yeah, can you shed some light and, and, and educate us on, on this yeah. on, on topic? So it's simply, it, this is the beautiful thing about the internet. You could literally Google this and you could figure this out for yourself since it seems to be taken out of history books these days. So I feel like I need to tell a story, a true story, and take things back centuries and centuries ago. So when you talk about the history of this word, Black people, African at the time, were literally kidnapped af- off the coast of Africa against their will, put on ships, all while being not referred to by their given name, they were referred to by the N-word. They're then placed on these ships, chained there, many of them dying from starvation, from being malnourished, from disease. And if they happen to make it to America, they are then placed on platforms where they are sold to the highest bidder as they are auctioned off like animals. If they're strong, if they look like they can do work well, Uh, the women, if they look like they can bear children so they can breed more black people so they can have more slaves. We are literally treated like animals. And what are we called when we're on these ships, when we're standing on a platform in chains? We're called the N-word. Then from the platform, you go to the plantation. You work all day, in from the sun up to sundown, if not later, all while you're while the field, well, you are a field hand, but all while the, while the person there is slapping you, whipping you, beating you, the women are being raped. You're not allowed to learn how to read, write. You're not allowed to congregate unless it's church and they are inputting their religion on you. You're not allowed to use any of the same practices that came from the land they took you from. Um, it's, And this is all while you're being called the N-word. I just don't understand why when you know that history, when you know that Black people had no rights when they came over here, they were enslaved, they had no money, they were literally on paper referred to as three-fifths of a person, not even considered a whole person. And how did they continue to oppress us by creating this word to hold us down. There was not one positive thing about this word. It was referred to black people. It was a term that was insulting. It was a term that was contemptuous. It was a term that was to, it was a term that was used to make us inferior. And even though when slavery ended in 1865, it's a, the word didn't end. Slavery did. The word didn't end. We still didn't gain our rights. We didn't gain rights until into the 20th century. You had voting that was against us, segregation that was against us. It was illegal to marry somebody outside of your race. All while they're still calling you the N word. And you are fighting and mad because you can't use this word. When you know the history of it, and it's not even just that you can't use this word, this word was used by your ancestors for this purpose, and you still want to use it. So when I hear people saying, oh, it's just a lyric in a song, oh, it's just a mistake, you have to acknowledge where that word comes from and how deeply rooted in hate it is. And the whole use of it by Black artist. It is, it has become a form of art. And I'm not saying I use it. I'm not saying that I even want to hear it, but you can't tell black people how they can feel about a word that was used towards them. I made this comment um, in my live where I said, James Brown had the song, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud because it used to not be 
a good thing to say black people. You said mm-hmm. African American. And he said, we are black and we should be proud of it. And so what you had in the 20th century is black people take that power back. Oh, you want to use that word negatively against me? No, I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it as something that's positive. But that doesn't give the permission for non-blacks to then take and use that word too. And I guess my thing is once I break down this history for you, because maybe you didn't know, once I break down the history for you, why then do you still want to use the word? Because it's in a song. It just makes no sense to me. If I was singing a song that had derogatory wor- words towards Jewish people and had references towards the, the Holocaust, I would never sing those words just because there are the, so- the lyrics in a song. And I would never tell Jewish people how they should feel about me wanting to sing those lyrics in a song just because that Jewish rapper said them as well. One plus one does not equal two here. If I see somebody doing something wrong and then I do it wrong, I don't get to also blame the the original person who was wrong. Like that's just not how things work here. And that's what people are saying and they're fighting for. And I guess I just feel like when you hear this history, you should feel so disgusted and dirty, whether you hear me say the word, whether you've never said the word, or you heard somebody say it on their live. You shouldn't be fighting against it. You shouldn't be excusing it. You shouldn't be giving someone a pass for it because you know their heart. You should hold them accountable. If you see your brother, your sister, your friend doing something wrong, you hold them accountable for it so they don't make the same mistake again. And you encourage them to grow from it and move on from it. Yeah. I mean, w- well said. And it's just like, as you're talking, you know, I'm thinking to myself too, it's just like you, re- you reference Jewish people. Also uh, the LGBT community, the, the same, F same. word, for example. Exactly. Listen, I've, I've used, I'm sure I've used the F word before, especially in my youth. It hasn't been that long before we've been educated by the, the LGBT community, how derogatory that word is, yeah. how it's been used against them kind of, and some similarities to the, how, the way the N word has been used. Yeah. And listen, like, it's a terrible word. And now it's like you don't say it. And you see gay people use that word in the same context in which you're describing it is because, you know, they say it almost proudly, like the words, you know, uh, and, you know, they want that power back. It's like, you know what? I don't, you calling me that doesn't bother me. Great I, point. You know, it's, uh, and, and like, what are we going to tell gay people, you know, for having, again, being beaten to death for being gay, exiled by families, um, you know, a, a bunch of things. And we're going to tell them because they can't, like, uh, people are still tweeting it. People, like, have no problem. I saw something a couple days ago about a pickup truck uh, using the F word, saying, uh, dear F word, please open our gyms. And it's just like, we still haven't even, like, uh, r- you know, as a community, we don't associate the F word maybe as bad as the N word yet, you know? And... There is no, there's no competition of what's worse, right? Um, and yet, it's just like, I just, what I don't get is just like, why as white people, are we so just adamant about fighting this? Just be like, Perfect. okay, cool, I won't use it, you know? I know we text yesterday, and my, I'm just going to say it, my gut tells me the reason why people get defensive about things is because they know they've been guilty at times. You know, there's a lot of people out there who might have said it in the, their in their car, say the N word or whatever. And again, like we're not here to sit there and say you're a terrible person, but we're just here to say if you're listening, it's not okay. Try not to use it. Don't use it. Uh, try to be again an ally. Uh, don't feel defensive, but like just listen and learn. And like moving forward, don't do it. You know, Hawthorne. I gotta tell you what. Uh, Father's Day is approaching. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, Dad. I got you a, a bunch of Hawthorne. Uh, also, uh, I've been I've been using a ton of it. Um, it's uh, a bunch of amazing, high quality men's products: uh, face cleanser, uh, uh, body wash, uh, cologne. Uh, it's it's a bunch of different stuff. I also love the packaging. It's very simple but masculine, and uh, uh, it's of the highest quality. And uh, also, they just make it really easy by uh, kind of curating your products that you need. I actually used it. I was like looking for something for one of the men in my life. And I was like, let me go online. I took their quiz. It's super easy. It goes really, really fast. It asks you about your, the hair type, skin type, uh, even what you do for, for in your evenings. Do you like to go out to dinner? Do you like to go out to the clubs? And it takes all that information and it curates it into different packages. And then I sent it off and then, uh, my, my friend opened it and we had a nice little unboxing. 
and we got yeah, to do all, all the, the products boxes. together actually, is the best part. Their, their unboxing is actually quite great. They have these like really neat pa- wrapping and it's really stylish. And uh, it's their cologne smell great, uh, m- musky and fresh. I don't, I don't. How do you describe men's cologne? It's, I don't <laughs> know, it smells good. I guess is all you can say. So, anyways, if you're looking for Father's Day ideas, uh, think of Hawthorne. Check out Hawthorne at hawthorne.co. That's Hawthorne with an e, and use my code V I A L L to get ten percent off your first purchase. That's H A W T H O R N E dot co and use my code v-i-a-l-l to get 10 percent off your first purchase hawthorne dot co well people we uh you know about noom uh we talk about a lot it's a a fun informative app that gives you a lot of great wellness tips right at at your fingertips so depending on what your health goals are uh Noom is a perfect uh, solution for you. Uh, As you know, people, shavings make a pile. Small steps make big progress. And Noom helps you meet some of your health goals, uh, depending on on what they are. So, uh, you know, better self-care, you know, eating right, uh, dealing with uh, anxiety and stress. You know, what we put in our bodies can go a long way to do that. And so Noom gives you some great healthy eating tips uh, to help you meet your health goals. Noom is based in psychology. Noom teaches you why you do things and why you do them. Uh, it helps empower you with the tools that you need to break those uh, bad habits and replace them with better, better ones. So uh, it's always great. Again, like just uh, tracking your meals, uh, knowing what you're putting in your body, very helpful uh, to, you know, having a health, healthier life. And, and so if you want to lose weight, if that's part of your goal, Noom can be really helpful for that. Uh, if it's just, just feeling better, having more energy, uh, that uh, also is very important. And Noom can help you with that. So again, uh, small steps make big progress when it comes to what we put in our bodies to help feel better physically, emotionally, and mentally. You don't have to make all the changes in one day. Small steps make big progress. Sign up for your trial today at noom.com slash V-I-A-L-L. What do you have to lose? Visit noom.com slash V-I-A-L-L to start your trial today. That's noom.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Yeah. I think so pe- people are quick to like feel very defensive because they're just like, again, they they hear, it's like this train of thought. They see Hannah do this, right? Uh, they see the the criticism she's getting. They think to themselves in their mind, they're like, "Well, shit, man, it's just like I've 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 said that in my car. I've said it with friends. Like, like what is? I'm not a racist. I mean, I don't. No one's saying you are, but it's still not okay. So instead of defending it because you feel guilty, just stop doing it and learn from it. You know, yeah. no one like we're not trying to cancel anyone here. This is like an no, we're not an opportunity for us to like grow and learn and just say, you know what. Again, I've been guilty in my life of doing ignorant things. You know, I don't sit there and remember. I'm just certain I have. I grew up in a white world. Like, it's just impossible to grow up in that tight of a community and not uh, learn from people who are your elders, who you respect, who learn from their elders. That's, that's called, you know, the systemic part of it all. Uh, I, we got to stop it. And I think also what gets me is people who are, you know, they want to say it like you get to say it. Why can't I get to say it? How dare you tell me I can't say it? Well, let me just it's like if you don't understand it, you also don't understand what it is to be black. You don't understand what it is to be a part of a race that has been oppressed in this country for centuries. You don't understand what it is to be judged by the color of your skin first. It's still happening. Yes, we've made progress. It's still happening, though. You don't understand what it is to walk into a room and people have preconceived notions about you just because of the way that you look. And so It's very simple here. This is one of those things, I heard somebody else say this, where don't try to talk, just listen to us. We're the ones who've been oppressed by the word. Don't try to tell us how to feel, just listen. And it's so simple, just don't say it, period. It's just like, cool, like no problem. That's all I have to do? I I should not do it? Great, it's like the easiest ask I've been ever given in my life. Don't say Um, it. I think it's a part of, though, understanding also the what white privilege means and just the fact of being told you can't do something. I mean, I posted something someone said the other day to me. We created the word. Why can't we say it? Oh, my God. That is that is your reasoning. But that is how people think. That is where privilege comes into play. And it's, yeah. it's just... I saw a comment from someone on Instagram who you could tell seemed to have the best intentions. And tried to blame you and other black people for being a part of the problem. And I'm just like, are you... F- <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, why do you want to put your energy 
into this argument that way. Mm -hmm. I just, is it just like, because you want to be right? Is it because you've said it and you feel guilty? I don't know. And again, people, it's not, a. let's just try to learn. Like you said, listen, uh, acknowledge that maybe you've done something ignorant in the past. We all have. And then say, I don't want to be ignorant going forward. And I want to continue to read what I can read and ask people who are willing to educate me. And again, like, uh, as, as we open this up, like Rachel and other black people and other minorities, gay people, you know, are, are tired of trying to explain to their friends why they shouldn't be. Hey, buddy, can you not say that? It's offensive. You yeah. know, uh, it's exhausting. It is um, exhausting. And please stop tagging us and all the other people that have said it before. I think I, I can't. And you can't keep tabs on all the people who have said this word singing a song. I can't. And I think that that goes towards the problem. It happens so much. You can't keep tabs. This is very simple. Just don't do it. The message that we are preaching on this podcast today, you can apply it to any situation. We, the, we believe you just shouldn't do it. Period. Yeah. Here's an example. Uh, the other week I was talking to one of my friends. He's gay. Mm -hmm. And in conversation, I used the phrase butt hurt. And he, he interrupted me and said, hey, Nick, can I just say, like, that phrase, it's just, it's offensive to gay people, some people, not all. Um, it bothers me. I didn't say, why? Right. Well, I don't understand. Why can't, I was just like, oh, thank you for sharing. I, I felt silly. I felt embarrassed that I yeah. hurt his feelings. I know that I've certainly used, that wasn't the first time I've used that phrase. And you know what I'm going to do now going forward? I'm not going to fucking say it because exactly. I don't need it in my vocabulary. There's plenty of other like adjectives and ways I can describe that feeling. Um, and I just don't need it, you know? Right. And if it hurts one person, I'm fine with not using it. And I'm not, I, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. Nick, such a good point, this conversation that you had with your friend, because a lot of what I'm seeing also is there are other black people who are in my comments as well saying, I'm not offended by it. It's not that big of a deal. One black person, I don't speak for the entire black race, just like th that person doesn't speak for the entire black race. But as you said, if your brother, your friend is offended, listen and hear them out. It doesn't mean that you say, well, so-and-so is black and they're not offended. That's not how it works. It's just not how no, it's it works. Just, and, and my it, life hasn't changed from never using that phrase again. And you sh and they and honestly, people should be offended just by knowing the history of the word. That's it. Like it's just ew. It's icky. Why would I want to be affiliated with this word? Yeah. Um, Rachel, I want to thank you for taking the time. I know this is exhausting to talk about, um, but necessary. So thank you. But so necessary thank you for allowing me to do. Uh, are we ready to lighten it up and get to some of our callers? Yeah, because we got good ones. All right. Uh, again, guys, thank you for taking the time to listen to Rachel. I hope you uh, did this with an open mind and an open heart. Uh, as always, uh, don't forget to send your questions at asknickacastme.com. And uh, I guess without fur further ado, let's get to some of these calls. Question time with Nick. Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Hi, I'm Courtney and I'm 29 years old. Hi, Courtney, 29. Hey, How Courtney. Hi. So I originally wrote in because um, my last three relationships have ended with the phrase or some variant of it's not you, it's me kind of deal. And I was trying to figure out, you know, with like kind of being three in a row, you know, is it really just them or is it kind of me? So um, a little bit of background, like I've had three relationships in the past probably um, five years and they're kind of depends on how long but they kind of range from months to about two years so um, I feel like I'm a person who's um, kind of an all-in when I find somebody that I really connect with and I feel really confident in so um I would try to be really giving and all that stuff. And the last relationship I was in ended after a couple of months when he talked about how he was really unhappy with his job and how he felt like that was creating kind of a tension between us and that it wasn't something that was fair to me and that I deserved better. So okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to... I'm just like curious, how long on average are these relationships? Are they like years or a couple months or, or various? 
I would say um, about a year. Um, okay. My last relationship was just a couple months, but typically about a year or so. Okay. So it's not as if like, this is like you're, you know, every, every time you date a guy for three weeks, this happens. Like you're having relationships with these yes. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Are you dating the same type of guy? So I don't really know. I feel like they're very different people generally, but I don't know if it's just a type that I'm, attracted to I'm a teacher so sometimes I wonder if I Teach I'm attracted them? to yeah I'm just projects like, yeah projects yeah that's just women we do that as women uh and yes, fairness guys, guys guys like projects too it's a, I think it's a certain personality more than a gender thing to be honest. uh I'm a, I like a fixer. I mean, like I have a fucking podcast, like sharing my unsolicited opinion. I fucking love people when they like to listen to me. It's just like, I'll date. Yeah. I'll save your life. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, um, I think it's a, a gender thing. Uh, listen in I mean, real quick without knowing these ex-boyfriends, two thoughts. One, there's nothing wrong with you. You're totally great. Uh, I can say that without having to know you too much. And of course, when these guys broke up with you to at some level, it was you. Yeah. Uh, it was also them. I only say that saying that like when people break up, they break up with them for a reason because they've even fallen out of like or whatever. Now, certainly it's true that when people uh, aren't fulfilled personally with their own lives, it's hard for them to love someone else. But that's also just like a bullshit excuse people love to give, right? Like, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I was kind of odd because like my last two relationships they've kind of given me this idea that they're like super serious and they're looking for something serious um my last relationship it kind of just about a week before he broke it off with me he was talking about this new job opportunity and he wanted to get my thoughts on the possibility of moving or him traveling for this job and he was asking me you know what are your thoughts with that if this is something that were to happen and I basically told him, I was like, you know, um, it kind of depends. I'm, I'm a teacher, so I'm pretty set and happy with where I am. But if something comes along that made sense, um, I wouldn't want to, like, keep you back from something that would make you happy. And, you know, if it came to something like that, we'd figure it out. And then, like, kind of uh, just over a week later, he's like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> you know, I, Courtney, I think that a lot of times when – because you're 29. I was – 32 before I found the relationship that worked for me. And I think that, and I, so I went through a lot of, I, I, that sounds bad. I'm, I was about to say, I went through a lot of men. <laughs> I just you know what, I, Rachel, if you did, <laughs> it's fine. It's 2020. No judgment over here. Well, my point is, is that I remember thinking when it didn't work out that it was me. And I think it's very natural for you to place the blame on yourself of, oh, it must be something that I did. But I encourage you to, it's not you. Like Nick was saying, you can tell that you're great. Don't think of it as something that you did or you must be the problem. Just think of it as, okay, it didn't work out. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't the right timing. And but, but it is coming for me, you know, like we want things when we want them, but it just might not be the right time for you. But that doesn't mean that it's, it's on you and it's your fault. It's nothing with you. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's just like when you get broken up with that, you are who you are, right? It sounds obvious, but, uh, they, you know, when people say it, like, I think it bothers people because they're trying to say it as a way to suggest that, uh, they almost still have feelings for you. They just yeah. are incapable of loving you back. It's like, right. it's me. It's just like, no, listen, you're not doing anything wrong. I mean, like, not that you're perfect, but like the relationship hasn't worked. For whatever reason, they've decided yeah. not to give, want to or need, be able to give you the affection that you need or want in, in a relationship. And some level, how they feel about you is why they're breaking up with you or lack thereof. You know, and there's a difference between it being you and you doing something specific or, you know, it's just a canned yeah. line, right? And as a result, you've gotten insecure about like, it's not me, it's you. And you're just like, well, fuck, man, everyone's saying this. I'm the only constant in this equation because right. like, you know, it's me. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's a shitty thing that people say because quite honestly, people are afraid of conflict. They don't know what else to say. When you don't know what else to say, you just say fucking dog shit canned lines. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it might and, be a pattern with them. Yeah. Yeah. 
you might be a pattern with them. I say this is the time to get confident. Just be like, you know what? It's I know I'm great. So it's clearly not me. It's some there's some kind of issue with them. So let me just move on to someone who can handle all this greatness. That's what I, I would that's what I, I think, would say. I think that's a great approach. I mean, there's a balance between knowing what you want, right? And like you said, it sounds like you are uh, you know what you want, you're establishing your career, you get excited when you like someone. So there's a little like angst on your side of like, do I move too fast? Or am I pushing them away? Like, listen, yeah. there's nothing wrong with being excited about wanting to be in relationship. Right. Maybe there's a little self-awareness. So, and it sounds like the way you describe the story, it wasn't like some guy goes and be like, hey, I might move this new job. And you're just like, I'll fucking go wherever you want, man. Like, yeah. I, just, I love you. Like, well, whatever you do, I'll be there. Like, you're not doing that. Like, no. you're showing a level of like, chill but just stating like listen i don't know like if this relationship works i'm flexible like whether it's you or someone else i'm willing to like compromise and make a relationship work for the right person there's nothing wrong with saying that and you should be proud that you have that type of like maturity to do so and that should never change and don't let a guy uh, or guys uh, who are saying this to you uh stop you from doing that there's nothing wrong with that that doesn't mean you're needy that doesn't mean you're desperate doesn't mean you want love too much it just means you're mature and ready to put yourself out there so a lot of people aren't prepared for that type of like maturity. They're just like, whoa, what is, that's a totally reasonable answer. And that scares the shit out of me. Yeah. Um, yeah. You get that a lot. So yeah, I, I think in general, uh, sounds like unless you're leaving something out, you're, you're just one of many people out there that is realizing that fucking love is hard and finding the right person is really hard and you're not willing to compromise. And listen, it only takes fucking one. You know, yeah. there's only one yeah. person that we really want to like, hopefully be with for the rest of our lives. So, you know, if you're making the biggest purchase of your life, do you look at one house? Yeah, no, not. <laughs> you know, you, you shop around, you know, yeah. you, 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 you get it right. You know, sure, there's yeah. a reason why like people get the divorced is because they don't <laughs> like this idea of having to like have this be hard. So as soon as they like someone, they settle down and they realize they have buyer's remorse. It's like, oh yeah. God, like that. Did I get did I get married to this person because I like the color of the door? I, you know, it's just like yeah. and yeah. then you get inside and you you kind of get in there and you realize it's a fucked up furnace, the floor's no good. It's like, you know, I mean, yeah. So yeah. you're just doing the work a little bit more and you're a little bit more pragmatic with your approach and as a result, you're getting guys who are just like, you know, you're 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 finding cracks in the armor. Yeah. And they're and they're kind of letting you know um that they're not ready. And that's fine. You should be grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's, it's one of those things that you get to the point where you're like, okay, well, I've heard this so many times in a row. And I even went to the point where I was like talking to my friends and I'm like, okay, can you just look through these text messages? Can you see if I'm doing anything? Like I'm, yeah. so. that's not Don't you that. girl. Yeah. Don't that's do that. It's not you. If there's the only thing you're just, you're, you're, you're meeting a lot of guys who are not good at conflict. Yeah. Not, a lot of people aren't, you know? Yeah. Um, and if there's okay. anything, you know, just thinking out loud, you could try to do is like, I don't want to pick a fight or a relationship to see how they're able to, to talk to you, but like pay attention to how they ad address adversity. Yeah. How do you guys communicate with things that you don't agree on? Right. Um, right. Are, do they avoid it? You know, do they kind of passively aggressively approach it? You know, and you're just, yeah. and you, then you sweep it under the rug because it's not really a big deal. You know, things like that, you become more aware of like, you know, how, how do I communicate with this person on, on these topics? And that, that might give you some insight on how they might, you know, approach uh, things going forward. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You got this. Yeah, you'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't let people get you, get you down. And yeah, also like, there's make you question yourself. more people are not gonna, I don't care who you are. You know, I just don't care who, I don't care if you're a supermodel or a, an athlete or whatever. Like there's plenty of people who aren't going to like you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, show me like the seemingly most perfect person and I'll show you a list of people who are sick of their bullshit. You know, we all have bullshit and, and, and over time people get annoyed with it and it's finding that one special person who puts up with our bullshit Yeah, and then we fall in love with them Yeah, and we mutually like their bullshit and there you go. Okay. That sounds yeah. like love, Nick. Thanks. I mean, you know, Thanks. that's love, girl. I I have a lot of bullshit, and then I subsequently like don't like dealing with other people's bullshit. And look what you have. You got fucking, you know, me quarantining by myself. Find find the one who puts up with all your bullshit. So there you go. All right. Well, best of luck. Thank you for calling. Yeah. And, uh, thank you. Thank you right. so much. Yeah. Bye bye. 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 How's it going? 
Oh, it's going good. I'm Aubrey. I'm 24 years old. Hi, Aubrey. Hi. <laughs> How can we help? <laughs> this is exciting. Um, okay. Um, I guess my problem mostly comes from my own insecurity and in my relationship, I guess you could say, but it's not really having to do as much with him anymore. It's like me just from some of the things we've went through. So to give context, I guess we started dating. It's about over four years now. Um, when I, we were in undergrad together. So I was a sophomore, he was a freshman. We started dating and we spent a lot of our time together, going to parties together, just stuff like that. And then once we got to the end, he graduated early. So we graduated at the same time and I needed to finish my graduate program at the school I was at. And then he was moving on to go to his um, graduate program somewhere else that he has to spend four years. So we were then five years apart or five hours apart. Sorry. And he, you know, it was just hard at that time because for so long we were almost, I would say, attached at the hip, which I, at the, at now looking back, I know wasn't totally healthy, but we just relied on each other a lot. And I think I relied on him a lot more than I should have. And that wasn't really fair in my um, way, but that's just kind of how it ended up happening because of some of the situations in college that happened. So he moved away and where that left me was like, I started feeling more insecure. Like I was going through a lot of stress where I was at. I had to make like all new friends because all my friends had left. And then it was just a lot to deal with. And when he left, he was making, you know, cause he was in a new place. So he was forced to make a bunch of friends and where he's at, there's like, it's a high um, quantity of girls there, which then I wasn't used to that. That was something like totally new to me. Where is this place you speak of? <laughs> It's, it's optometry school. <laughs> it's right. a <laughs> it was just like a softball joke, you no, know. No, like it was, you had to take it. Like I had to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, he's in optometry school, so I guess there's more people that are women gotcha. that go there than guys. Gotcha. Didn't know that, but apparently that's so. So, you know, he made friends with a lot of girls, and you know, I was I'm not in that same position where I was at, so it was really hard for me to like understand. And like be able to give trust in that way because it's like I'm not naive to the fact that you know you make connections with other people. We were extremely young when we got together, and I don't have those same interests that he can talking to these people that are in the same field as him. Like because we're on totally different wavelengths of what we're doing for our careers. Sure. So that that year was so hard because it was constant fighting. Like if I felt insecure about something, if he felt insecure about something, and it was just a constant battle. I felt, and a lot of it, I felt like I had to bend a lot because it's like, I tried being really lenient at first and the cool girlfriend and being like, fine with, yeah, you can go study with her or like, yeah, I go have a party or you can go out to eat with a couple of your girlfriends, you know? And in my head, I'm sitting here like, okay, like that's not normal. Like to me, that's not normal. We never had that dynamic sure. in a relationship. And now I'm five hours away where I don't really, I felt like I wasn't put first in that situation. Like I was never really asked and I don't think he did it on purpose. I think that it was just like he, he was comfortable enough thinking I was comfortable enough since I didn't say anything about it. Sure. And then it kind of like got to the point where I was just at my breaking point because I was never asked like, Hey, is this okay? If like, do you mind if I do that? Mm -hmm. And it kind of just got to a point where we were just arguing then all the time. And I felt like I was becoming way more controlling in that sense, which isn't really my personality per se. I wouldn't say it is. Um, but you know, it happens. And then it just, it got to the point where like, I couldn't take it anymore because we were fighting so much. And I felt like my feelings were on the back burner a lot. So it got to a point where it was, I think the summer and, um, I kind of just laid it out there. Like I didn't want to go through that anymore. I didn't want to feel like I wasn't being put first or a priority. Like every time I would, like, sometimes I come down to see him driving five hours and then, you know, I'd end up hanging out with him and his friends. You know, it's like, I just drove five hours. I don't really want to hang out with your friends. Well, you know I'm curious to. though, like these friends, you said you're hanging out with them. Were you hanging out with some of his, these female friends that yeah. made you insecure? I was, I was at first. And you know, now it's, now that I kind of know it's like the second year, end of the second year into it, I know them better. Okay. So it's not as much of an issue for me now. It's just that sure. at the time I felt, I feel like my self-esteem went down a great bit because one, like there was that. Then two, I was under a lot of stress and I just started like breaking out terribly. So like I was super insecure about that because of my acne at the time. And it just made me just fall apart. Basically. I didn't really, 
Like I felt like I can't connect with him here. I don't look the same like I used to. I like just things going on in my head all the time. Like I can't compare to people that have more in common with him. And now this year we're here and I moved back home and where his school is, it's really, it's only an hour away from me and my job. So it was nice that it worked out that way. But it's like, I still feel like if someone, like, I feel like if, if this relationship isn't going to work out, it's going to be because of me and my own insecurity of me, like thinking ahead into the future. I'm like always thinking like, I don't want to waste my time on this person that like, I really love now, but then who knows if he's going to like find another connection by the end. And I'm waiting, sitting at home, saving this money. So then like, maybe we could go somewhere after this and like start a life where I'm going to be waiting until like 27. And then all of a sudden it's going to go in my face type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm constantly comparing myself to, um, like his other friends that I feel like I can't, like I said, I can't connect in some ways and I don't know how to take that or like how to go with it. And I know that he knows my insecurity about it and I don't want to make him feel bad because then when I bring up like a conversation of how I feel sometimes, like, I feel like I can be aggressive in a way, but I don't mean to come across that way. I just think like 10 steps ahead. And then I feel like I come off negative. So, where are you I where are you now and what's the kind of big picture question that you have? I guess one is like how to get over like I think we're in a pretty good place, but um I want to get over like the insecurity of questioning so much and just kind of like know how to deal with that and then also like when something is bothering me, I have trouble bringing it up in a way where it's not going to come off aggressive and maybe hurt his feelings. Sure. So if that makes sense. Uh I have some thoughts, Rachel, do you want to Start us off. Yeah, I have to say, off the top, you are very self-aware. Yeah. Which oh, if you weren't, I think that would be a huge problem. But you're recognizing the problems that you have within the relationship. You say you're insecure. You say you can be controlling. You say you can be a little negative because you allow your insecurities to get to you. And maybe a little aggressive in your approach when you're approaching him with things. The fact that you know that, then you know how to handle that when you're in, when you're navigating this relationship with him. So like, as you were talking, the first thing I thought was, wow, she gets it. So I think it's just more of taking a a beat, right? When you feel these feelings, acknowledge them, but then take a beat, take a break. That's what I mean by that before acting on them. Mm -hmm. And then it sounds like your boyfriend also is including you in his life. It would be a totally different story if you weren't meeting these girlfriends, if he was keeping right. everything private. But you have to look at that he isn't hiding anything from you. He's bringing you into his life. That right. should make you feel secure. You know, so I would challenge you to start looking at things he is doing rather than the things he's not doing. And I really think that that can help you. Like and and, and also I have to say nobody can help you get over your insecurity except right. for you. You know, he could he could have you attached to his hip every single day. And I think that's the adjustment because that's how you were and now you're not. But you have to put your energy into something else, your friends, a hobby, your work. But the fact that he is giving you something and letting you into his life, you have to hold on to that too. Because I know because I've had it the other way. Yeah. Oh, who is she? Oh, you know, like they didn't know who, right. who I was. I didn't know who they were. So like that's that's great that he's doing that for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I agree with Rachel. Uh, it's your strength is your weakness. You know, yeah. uh, you're a self-aware person. Sounds like you, 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 in your, you're in your head a lot. You think about it. You try to be logical, but you're overthinking. I relate to this. Um, yeah, same. And here you are, you know, my biggest, I think weakness I have, I've had my whole life and I have to this day is I stop myself from like trying anything because I'm like, well, why, why invest in something that could not work? You know, um, I still do that. It's probably my biggest problem right now in, in terms of my relationship life. But, um, yeah, like kind of like late Rachel said, you just kind of have to get out of your own head sometimes. You know, when I asked about the friends thing, you know, it's one of those things you got to like pick your poison, you know? Right. Uh, if a guy's going to be friends with a, a girl in the opposite sex, like that's not a crime. Uh, it's allowed. Mm-hmm. But the easiest way to make uh, the the other person feel comfortable is also becoming friends with that person, Mm -hmm. right? It actually would be more weird that if you visit your boyfriend when he's out of town and all of a sudden he's just like, well, only be you, 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 babe. And then you never meet these friends he's always hanging out with when you're not around. Like, I understand that you want to spend time with him and you want to like, but like, 
If you want to get comfortable with these strange people he's hanging out with, the best thing to do that is to see how they act with you. If they're like wanting to be your best friend and get to know you and you, and you like, you become like friends with the, like that happens a lot. Like guy dates girl, guy has girlfriend, you know, girl as a friend. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden they become like homies and sisters. And all of a sudden they break up and the girls like remain friends. That can happen. And yeah. you want to see those types, how those girls interact with you. That can tell you a lot about like, is there any shit going on? Mm-hmm. And if they just like are like, oh, my God, like, let's be friends. You know, Aubrey, like, you're so great. I was dying to meet you. And like, you know, like once in a while, shit can happen. They're like super Machiavellian. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's a big thing. So you have to be patient there. You can't sit there and be pissed that he is trying to introduce you to these strange people. Because that's what I would do. I would want you to know, like, you can trust me. I have nothing yeah. to hide. Here are these people. Like, I'm just like, I go to fucking school with them. Right. Um, so you got to think about that. Mm-hmm. Listen, you're 24. This relationship might yeah, not work out. 24. You know, I, I don't know. And if it and if you break up in two years, you're going to be fine. And yeah, you're going to feel like you waste a lot. You know, like yeah. you've been with this one person for the bulk of your adult life. And a lot of people like Rachel and myself have like, you know, dated a handful of other people. Like things don't go the way we plan them, you know, and being a heady mm-hmm. person, you've probably had some sort of plan and vision of how you want your life to be. And that may or may not work out that way, you know, mm-hmm. to be determined. But as Rachel said, like, this is a relationship you want to be in. This is a relationship you are in. And you have to try to not drive yourself crazy. It sounds mm-hmm. like he's doing what he can. Right. And, you got to focus on that. And, and you're kind of creating a little bit more stress than you have. Uh, right. You know, the acne and feeling insecure, self-aware, you know, hopefully he makes you feel love. But as Rachel said, that at the end of the day, this is going to come from you or not. Mm-hmm. And he spent uh, your year, your hardest year, you said, was last year, where right. you were stressed, you were breaking out, you were putting this pressure on him, you were having feelings of insecurity, and he stayed with you. So also yeah. think about that. You know what I mean? This guy really does care about you because through the hard times, he was still there. And I actually think that it's really great that your relationship is going through these challenges because it's not realistic to be tied at the hip or joined at the hip with your significant other. You You have to separate. You have to have your own. And then you come together and also have your own together. And I think that that's what makes it beautiful. You also have to be realistic about what it is that you can and can't handle in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Some people can't handle girlfriends. Some people can't handle distance. Some people can't handle, you know, a difference in careers. You, you have to know within what you can handle. And -hmm. if you can, then you move on from that, but try to really refocus. Cause I am so like this, (laughs) try to refocus on what it is he is doing in your relationship. Right. Right. And like, the thing is, it's not that I don't know that he's great. Like, and I think that that's the thing. It's like, I know that he's done a lot for me and that he proves to like care about me and stuff. It's like, I get myself worked up over things and I like it's like it's constant like analyzing like well why didn't this happen and why did he do this and like it's a constant like battle for me and I think I agree that I don't want to be like attached at the hip that's not what I want I like being my own person I have my own things I'm interested I'm really into my job I have totally I'm distant in that I think where I have the problem sometimes is that like we're sometimes on like two different wavelengths like he's still in school so he's making all these friends I'm at work and I live at home. So it's like, again, so it's like, I don't, I, I'm friends with some of my high school friends, but then I'm like, eh, do I really want to hang out with them again? And it's hard to like get out and then make new friends. So then I'm like, I, I have friends. It's just not as many. And I don't yeah. have as many plans per se, because it's like, that I'm that was going to be right my now. next question uh, is you need to make more friends. You need a right. more of a personal life. Uh, you're yeah. young enough that you're kind of in this like in between world. And I think we've all been there again. You have these great expectations for yourself and I don't say this to be condescending, you're still a fucking kid in a lot of ways. And that's, enjoy it. Like you're 24, make friends. I, some of my best friends I have in my life are people I've met a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Friends come and go sometimes. I have, fr- some friends have been with me since high school. It is a, you know, the circle of life. It's part of life, right? So stop feeling like this is the, you know, we make this mistake at that 23, 24, 25, where you had these big plans for yourself. And you're like, this is my life. These are my friends. This is going to be my husband. Like, you know, this is, this is the rest of my life. Like, you know, yeah. you know, you have so much life left to live. You don't know what it's going to look like and it's going to be exciting and scary and things are going to change and you shouldn't challenge yourself to go out there and make new friends. I don't know if you went to high school with these people, but you, the way you talk, it's just like, well, you know, we're at different points in my life. He's in school making new friends and I have a job. 
And that's literally what you said. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, okay, well, great. You have a job. Are you not allowed to fucking be friends with these people? No. Like, it's, I know what you mean. Like, where you know? I'm working, though, it's so hard because it's like I like Fine. one Don't person that's with... like my age. So it's like trying to figure yeah, out but where you to need go to, to like, make friends. It's a, it's a frame of a mind. You kind of yeah. have to stop. You have to say... Aubrey needs to make more friends. So whatever that is, you do things, you join clubs, you know, recreational like sports, I don't know, an art class. Like you just put yourself out there. You put out that energy that you are open and wanting to make some more friends. And that's, and you should. And you, I'd be really curious what you think about like your world around you as you explore and open up new possibilities. Yeah. It might bring your relationship closer because it just reaffirms your love for this guy. Or you might like wonder like, am I, if, am I, do I love this person? Am I holding on this relationship so much? Because like, I just, I've decided this is what I want to be in and I don't really know anything else, you know? And that can be a little scary sometimes to do, but like uh, my big picture advice to you is stop acting like you're 60. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and like, as if your life is like, pretty much done and like you're just gonna like coast through it um people who are 60 are probably the most adventurous you know they have that perspective i will tell you what somebody told me control your mood don't allow your mood to control you there you go that's, that's like one. that my big picture to you because i you are you a taurus uh eh, i guess i don't know wait no wait, when's your birthday oh am i a to wait i'm sorry i didn't hear when's you when's your birthday Oh, December 27th. Okay. You're Sagittarius or Capricorn. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what does well, that no, mean, like, Rachel? No, I'm just, I thought, I usually I'm like, okay, you think, we, you think like me, we're really stubborn or really, yeah, you're a Taurus, but no, you're, you're a Capricorn. Okay. Um, anyways, adjust your mood. Don't allow your mood to adjust you. Is that what I said? Yeah. yeah. Control your mood. Don't allow your mood to control you. Okay. Yeah. Just be open. Just be, there's, you have so much life in front of you and there's going to be a lot of new adventures and and it's going to be good and scary and bad sometimes but i think you need to be open to that possibility that your life is yeah. not as planned out as you've been telling yourself for the past few years and that doesn't mean you're not going to end up with this guy or not but you truly don't know and i think the world is going to be a lot more exciting when you're open exciting when you're open to that possibility yeah i agree <laughs> i'm coming to realize that a little more that i can't plan everything so, yeah, listen, I didn't figure that out until years later. Um, so don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So, all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, all thank right. you. Well, best of luck. You're welcome. Thank you. And you're a total babe. Like, you oh, shouldn't have any insecurities. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. All right. All Bye. Right, How's it going? Good. Right, my name is Sierra. I am 27 years old. Hi, Sierra. Hi. How can we help? So I'm calling in today because I have a, um, I've been having some issues with my husband's past affecting um, my current relationships with family and friends. And um, we've been, gosh, we've been together for six years and he is 10 years older than I am. Um, so about 15 years ago, he was involved in the porn industry. Okay. And yeah. So he told me about it day one, uh, first date. And I was, when he told me, I thought it was going to be the way he made it sound. I thought he was going to tell me like he killed somebody. And I was like, oh my gosh. So when he told me, I was actually like relieved. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what he told me. Um, and that's the way I, to do it, right? You know, yeah, hey, yeah. I got some terrible news for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> You know, uh, when people are, people are just like, oh, can I tell you something? No, don't be mad. Right. All right. I don't want, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to be five minutes late. Uh, and you're like, oh, thank God. No, no problem, man. <laughs> anyways, yeah. go ahead. So anyways, uh, just fell in love with the person that he was. And um, our marriage is great. Uh, we have three kids um, under the age of five. Uh, so we're very busy. And um, we lately, and really since we started uh, dating, we've been getting like harassed via Facebook, Instagram, any kind of social media. Um, Even I from strangers? From strangers. They make, um, they make like fan accounts yeah. and oh. they, of, of him. And then they'll post it uh, on comments on my family members, Facebooks. And they'll, you know, they'll search us out. And uh, it's just been, it's been very difficult. And uh, my immediate family knows 
most of them know. Um, there is a catch though that I didn't include in my message to you. Um, so he not only was involved in straight porn, but he also dabbled in gay porn. And okay. that is where I feel most people have the issue. Um, and I guess I just want to know, like, I'm having a really hard time handling it and giving responses and maintaining relationships with people um, when they have such a negative feedback towards me. I mean, people didn't come to my wedding um, when they found out, uh, you know, really close family members. And I understand, I understand it's difficult for people to comprehend. Um, but if anyone knew, I mean, people know the kind of person he is and it's part of his past. It's not who he is now it's mm -hmm. in the past. And I hope people just can move forward from it, but it's been a struggle. It's definitely been a struggle, um, in our relationship um, with other people and, you know, just doing the best I can and wanted to know your advice yeah. because sometimes I feel In terms like, of like how to handle the whole situation. How would you handle when people give me feedback and negative responses and how to maintain like a strong relationship with my husband? Um, when, I am having such a hard time with people that are so close to me in relationships and, you know, my husband and my kids come first and I don't want this affecting them um, negatively in the future as well. So um, it's interesting. So it's funny. Uh, I don't know if you follow my questions with Nick on my Instagram. Um, yeah, time. So like, this is like the long form in my Instagram. I kind of give these abrupt opinions. If I, if you wrote me in on my questions with Nick, I would have, my advice would be two words fuck them. You know, <laughs> that would be my advice. Um, yeah. big picture wise, that would, you know, it's, uh, that's kind of is my advice is from what you're telling me and correct me if I'm wrong, you love your husband, you love your family, whether you like what his past is about or not, you love the person that he is. And, you know, he who hasn't sinned cast the first stone kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you, you know, life is about prior prioritizing what's the most important to you. And sometimes we do have to make very tough choices as it relates to other relationships we have in our life. And I, you know, I'm a firm believer. I said it already in this podcast, relationships and friendships come and go just like everything else. And um, it's not your job to sit there and convince other people uh, of being as understanding as, as you have chosen to be. Um, is it sad? F yeah. And does that mean that some people are going to leave your life? Yeah, it sucks. But you got to follow your heart and you got to protect what's most important to you. And if what's your most important to you is your husband and your kids, um, then that needs to be your priority. And, and I would, my advice to you is wouldn't waste a lot of energy splitting your energy into trying to make all these other relationships work. And I think that's what's probably draining you and driving you crazy is trying to like make everyone happy in this situation. Right. And you're trying to empathize with everyone else's point of view and, and, and trying to understand, well, I mean, I get why, you know. And listen, it's uh, your lifestyle is not for everyone. Your 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 compassion and your empathy towards your husband is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here for the people listening to like. And there's probably people out listening to be like, "Fuck, I couldn't talk, fucking do that." I mean, you know what? Good for you that you don't have to be. Right. Uh, but there's a difference between having someone say, "I couldn't do that. It's not for me," and and then you know casting judgment and harassment. The same thing like Rachel and I talked about in the band of this podcast. It's just like. You know, you can either choose to like show hate and, and, and harass people thinking that you're doing something good by uh, calling them out because they don't live your life or to the, you know, whatever your faith is. And if they, you know, if people want to use God as an, an excuse to why they might be harassing you because it goes against their lifestyle. Again, like, you know, uh, Jesus hung around, you know, prostitutes and, and, and criminals, uh, mm -hmm. So people just are insecure at themselves and maybe the people around you had a plan for you. It's, who gives a shit what their plan for you was? Uh, it's your life. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. Right. Um, and I know what I'm saying is in a lot of places, easier said than done. Um, 
But I think if that is your mind frame and you protect the things that you love the most, I think you will feel a lot less stress in trying to please everybody else. No, I think you're absolutely right. And it's just very frustrating because it is such a part of his past. And I feel like everybody has a past and everybody does things they, for whatever reason, they did them, you know, doesn't define who they are now. And I, I believe that. I believe that people are, you know, th- things happen and people are, gen- you know, generally good. I mean, I'll be honest. I've often wondered. I've watched porn. I watch porn. Don't get me wrong. And I've thought to myself, what's next for these people, you know? And I, you know, I say this now and, and 22 year old Nick was very different than, than Nick now in a sense that like, uh, you know, I grew up very conservative and I remember, uh, uh, one of my first girlfriends, total babe, I thought she was beautiful. And I, she told me when early in our relationship that, um, there was a part of her that had this goal to pose for playboy. And I was just, and granted, she hadn't. She just told me that was like something she thought would be cool. And I was beside myself. And I remember like, we argued about this all the time. I didn't even like the idea that she liked to fantasize about it, right? Like I, you know, I was very judgmental and very critical. And now it's just like, I don't, you know, if I fall in love with someone and, you know, I, I was talking to a girl once who, um, she was just like, I, I took a nude when I was uh, younger and my and then we broke up and my ex-boyfriend sent it to his friends. And if you Google me, it's out there. And I was like, well, he's a dick, but uh, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, you, you adjust. And these people, who knows what their belief systems are, but uh, it, it's a wild thing. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm rambling, but I just think it's, uh, it's important. I think it's good for you for, for doing this and, and you sound really in love and happy in your relationship. And I think that's an amazing thing, you know? We're, we're very happy. Very, I mean, we have very awesome kids and, you know, we live a very normal, I mean, life. He is very successful. I, you know, I just, you know, we're very happy, you know, overall. It's, it's just that, that thing that keeps creeping up and I'm really like freaking irritated, you know, that just people have so many negative things to say and it, that it bothers me so much and, yep. you know, shouldn't. So I think that, first of all, we're happy. You're happy and you look happy. And Thanks. I think that that's the bottom line. And Nick summed it up so well. So I really don't have much to say other than this. What sucks is, is that this is the past, but it's public. So mm-hmm. they feel that, that they can judge you because it's something that they know when behind closed doors, who knows, you know what I mean? Like they could have been watching it. You like, you, you never know. And the thing is, is I feel like if, if these are your friends, if this is your family and they know you and they know your heart and they've seen how beautiful your relationship is and the three beautiful kids that you've had from it, if you're explaining to them how this makes you feel and how it's hurting y'all's relationship, if they're your true friend, if they really love you, I feel like they can get past it. You know, it might be hard for them to accept, but if you just pour your heart out, I can't imagine that they would still hold that, the past against you. Right. Um, especially, I, again, I don't know what their beliefs are, especially if they're so-called Christians, because that isn't even what Christians are supposed to be practicing. So it's, yeah, I, I, I feel like with time, things will get better for you. Thank you for that. So wild that I can only assume the people who are aware of who your husband is clearly watch porn. Exactly. <laughs> Except yeah. that, uh, hands down, they've watched it. That, uh, that's how they know who he it, is. Hands you know? down. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's like, it's like follow the breadcrumbs, you know, like they, they <laughs> curiosity, if nothing else, they went back uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I, you know, it's, that's just the world we live in. It's sad. It's not yeah. an excuse. Uh, people are so afraid of things that are different. And again, I say this, I've been that person before. I've been the judgmental person. I, I, I say this, I'm thinking about it. I mean, man, we fought all the time, me and my girlfriend, for her desire of, of finding it. And would you do it? I, I was like thinking about breaking up with her because it was like she wanted to do this. And that was just... Uh, now you would brag about that. And kind of turned me on if I'm being honest. See? I just, um, <laughs> See, everything changes with time. So uh yeah, listen. Um 
just protect what's most important. And I know that's easier said than done, but uh, little things like if there's people on social media, is Facebook that important to you? No. I would just get off of it, you know? Don't, yeah. it's gonna be out there. And you just have to, again, you, you love him for who he is. You knew this going in. I gotta assume that you assumed there at some level there would be judgment, but- uh, I did, uh, I definitely underestimated it. I, you know, I went in thinking, you know, the people that I love and the people that love me will understand because they'll see what we have and who he is. And, you know, I guess I was a little naive at the time. I mean, that was six years ago, 21 years old. So. Sure. But listen, um, I'm not a parent, so I'm not trying to give you parent parental advice, but protect the people you love the most, right? Yep. Um, it is something you're going to have to address with your kids and people are going to come at your kids so focus your energy on your family and, and and prepare them for this. And the 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 stronger you are with your conviction and the better place that your heart and mind is on this topic is you're going to be a, a you're going to it's going to be better for you and your children. Um, Definitely. If you're projecting a level of uh, of tornness between you know your family and your critics, then I think your 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 kids will probably sense that a little bit and feel like maybe they should feel some shame. So I think you really want to hold your head high, yeah. and and not let your kids feel any shame. That certainly, unfortunately, people are going to try to make them feel. Um, and I think you know if you really focus on that energy, it will help you deal with that and where your priorities lie. Okay, yeah, no, I no, totally agree with that. No, you're right. Thank you. Thank you for... It's a wild your- story. I mean, I uh, I wonder if I'm familiar with his work, you know? <laughs> we actually met you, Nick. What? We met you before. Did we? Where? Do you really want me to tell the whole... Well, I do. I can always not, I can <laughs> I always not air this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm- kidding. I was at um, uh, Caitlin Bristow's uh, live oh, podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't recognize him, um, but uh, I think that's. I mean, listen, I, uh, I think it's wild. I've, I've grown to be so fascinated with you know different life choices and things like that. And clearly, mm-hmm. your husband, we're always maturing and growing as people. Um, I am curious though. Have you, uh, have you watched his, some of his stuff? The first time you told me, um, I went home and I got with my best friend at the time and. We sat down and we watched it on like a very tiny phone about as far as my arms can reach away uh-huh. from the face. And I did. I watched it. I wish I didn't, but you know, still didn't really bother me. We still went on a second date. So I was kind of curious if it turned you on and who knows? I'm a freak. So I don't know. You know um, <laughs> didn't necessarily know. Okay. But he did. And so that's what. I think was important, you know. Gotcha. That's good. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're listen. So many we get. You're familiar with this podcast. A lot of people call in with uh, problems about their love lives and the people they're in relationships with, and that seems to be the least of your problems. And so, in a lot of ways, you're fortunate, right. and, and be thankful of that. And uh, there's a lot of people like to say uh, only God can judge you, which isn't true. People judge all the time, but his opinion is the only one that matters. And so I don't even know if you're religious and it doesn't really matter. And I don't know why we're talking about God so much on this particular call. But my point is people obviously, you know, like we're not a, I'm a Christian, Rachel's a Christian, but we all know that some Christians like to like invoke their religion when they're casting judgment on other people, um, especially when it comes to things like this. Uh, you're happy, you're, you're good hearted, and we'll all, when we die someday, figure out exactly how we're going to be judged. And we'll all be like, wow, I didn't really know that that was a sticking point. So like, cool. Yeah. No, definitely. My, uh, um, yeah. So, all right. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks so, so much, much for calling in. I think you're both wonderful people. Oh, right thank you. Right you. All right. Take Have care. such a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. That was wild. It's great. That's interesting. I love that it didn't bother her. How's it going? Hey, my name's Bitsy. I'm 27 and I live in Kansas City. Awesome. How can we help, Bitsy? Okay. Well, um, one, welcome to my inner psyche. It's very terrifying. The So my question is kind of, um, I'll shorten it. The last relationship that I was in was when I was 16. So obviously I'm 27. It's, you know, been 11 years. And I always thought that my dating life was pushed back because I used to be um, about 300 pounds. So then I lost 
a bunch of weight and I got confident. So that was when I was 24 is when I started that. And then I started dating and, you know, that's the time of Bumble, Hinge, all that stuff. So I did a bunch of online dating and I still haven't found anyone to even, I would say like, even like a two month relationship, it still hasn't been something of any sort of significance. And I'm wondering, is it one where I'm living? Cause I live in Kansas city. So something I'm looking for is my, all my best guy friends are gay. My roommate, my best friend is a gay man. And in Missouri in the, you know, the Midwest, a lot of conservative people are here. So a lot of guys I'll date will say that they're fine with, um, the LGBTQIA community and all that. And then they end up making comments and like backhanded comments and actually not being okay with it. And so I'm wondering, do I need to change my strategy towards dating or is moving like so dramatic to want to think I should move somewhere else when I'm not finding something? Uh, I mean, moving is dramatic. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say you, that all the time. Okay. okay. I grew up in Milwaukee. Step back. <laughs> I grew up in Milwaukee, and I would say that Milwaukee and uh, Kansas City are probably not too far off in terms of the makeup of the city. Um, and you're right. There's a uh, you're you're gonna find uh, ignorance and bigots anywhere you go. Um, sadly, um, and. Um, there's a part of that that might play a role. Uh, my guess is there's probably other things playing a role too. Um, you know, we have a way of projecting our own insecurities. I'm curious, you know, do you talk a lot about how you, how much you used to weigh it early in your, in the dating process with the guys you're going on dates with? It's like interesting. Cause I just got comfortable talking about it. I would always like keep it as a card close to me because whenever I was that weight, it obviously, it was, well, it's embarrassing for me because it's kind of like anorexia people look at and they're like, that's a disease. I feel bad for someone. But when someone's obese, they're like, it's not a feel bad for it's like you're gross kind of, you know? And sure. so I always thought people would judge me for that. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't talk about it, but I just, you just want to be mindful of not wearing it like a scarlet letter in terms of like, it doesn't define who you are. Certainly it was something that you dealt with for a long time and I'm sure you have some scars about how people treated you and how you felt about yourself or insecurities you might've had. But, you know, those are things that when we had, what other insecurities we have, we have a way of projecting that onto our relationships. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be, have you ever talked to like, have you ever talked to like a healthcare professional or, or you know, I'm not saying you need to, but like, that can be traumatic. I mean, I have, I've, 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 you know, I've talked with people, people all talk with people. We always project our own shit onto new relationships. And that's why I asked that is like, if it's something you, in the way you talked, like you were just talking, you started getting emotional about it. Yeah, That's okay. Right. But I'm saying is we carry these things into relationships. Right. And sometimes early in relationships, other people in relationships will sense that. Right. And sometimes that can be scary with people that doesn't make it okay. And I'm not justifying their actions, but you know, um, people, it takes a special person to, you know, who loves you and connects with you. And the big picture is like, listen, you're still young. You haven't found the right person yet. This is kind of a repetitive thing that we talk about. Like, listen, you're not damaged goods. You're 27. <laughs> oh my God. Like you have so much time and have you, you know, dated a lot of guys that weren't right for you? F yeah, sure. You know, there's always more people out there that are not right for us than are right for us. So just, you yeah. know, playing the numbers, we're going to have what feels like worse luck. Question. But, uh, yeah. Question. How long, when did you say you started getting on like the dating apps and stuff? Um, when I was 24. Okay. So for three years, you've been out here dating. Like Nick said, this is the time to have fun with it. I wouldn't take it too harsh that nothing has stuck in the three years. It's not the city that you're in. I've personally been to Kansas City and it can be really popping. Y'all have yeah. like this square. I cannot think of what it's called. There's shopping, there's restaurants. Plaza. The Plaza. <laughs> Great barbecue. <laughs> it's yeah, great yeah. barbecue. It's popping. You have Super Bowl now. I mean, there's like a lot, there's a lot to appreciate about Kansas City. So definitely don't move because of the place. But I just think that don't rush it. Don't overthink it. Just enjoy it right now. Just have a good time. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if if you're dating people or going out with people who are critical to a lifestyle that that you're very close to, um, or that 
you know, it targets your friends, then those aren't the people for you. But yeah. I think that you just continue to have a good time to meet people to, you know, you're just now coming into your own, you know, like, congratulations to you, by the way, seriously. Um, and I just think that you should just enjoy it and have a good time. I don't think that it's as, like we said, first thing both Nick and I said, it's not as drastic as moving. <laughs> you go move to chase a relationship. And I think the moment that you stop looking for it, it'll just come to you. I think it's so innately within us to want to do things on our time and get it when we want it, but it doesn't have to be that way. So I just think just be present, enjoy the moment, don't overthink it and have such a good time doing it. And that could be three or four years from now. Like like people always yeah. make the mistake when their friends are like, listen, as soon as you stop trying, it's going to happen. And then someone goes, okay, I'll stop trying. And then a week later, like it hadn't fucking happened yet. You know, like. Um, That's me. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's all of us. It's all yeah, of it's, us. It's all of us. And so, yeah. And be proud of who your friends are, uh, your own internal, you know, things that you have. Like just don't get in your head. And I say that being a heady person about um, you are who you are. And the person you fall in love with, you're going to want them to appreciate who you are and your past and, and things like that. It's just uh, the reason why I brought up the the you know other stuff is like I sense you getting emotional and there's nothing wrong with getting emotional. Um, but there's nothing also wrong with, you know, just trying to address those emotions you have. Do you have insecurities about it still that you project? You know, I, I don't know, right? But um, there's nothing wrong with saying if you do, and and there's nothing wrong with addressing any confidence issues you might still have, or, you know, I, I don't know. But just don't, in, in the meantime, while you're having fun, as Rachel says, this is also a great time in your life to really focus on you again and, and, and on all aspects of your life, your mental health, your confidence in yourself, your career, and when you, again, as Rachel pointed out, when that is your energy, you know, you're focusing on yourself, you're kind of being selfish with self-care and your life and your career, that's when something's going to pop in when you're like, I don't have fucking time for this guy, you know, and you won't right. even be thinking about it, right? But you're, yeah, it sounds like you have this, you know, as we all do, the relationship seems to be the big priority for you right now, and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's okay. Right. But I think if you pr change your priorities, about uh, continue to for self, you know, continue on your self care and your career and your friends. That someday down the road, uh, this will happen. And I'm not saying get off dating apps, but just you know, that's something you do when you're bored and you're like sitting shotgun in a car while you know you're on a drive. You know, it's not that it's not part of your routine. Um, right. And you just kind of yeah. take take a breath and um, go from there. Is yeah, Blonde still? Like is blonde oh. still open in the plaza? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think so because it's I don't know what that one. is. It's good. It's, it's I mean, but the plaza stuff. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but I feel like I do put a lot of pressure on myself in general just to find a relationship. I really needed you guys to tell me I was young because it feels like I'm rapidly aging. Um, but it's just you know, I don't know. All my friends are either like in relationships or getting married or or have been married and. Um, Congratulations to them. To them, some yeah. of them will be single, married or not. I know in the people future. in their third marriages. Third. <laughs> so I'm yeah. willing, not Don't knowing anything it. about your friends, I'm willing to bet everything I have mon uh, financially on the fact that some of them will be single again. <laughs> I should agree with that. Yeah, there's some weddings I was like, mm, uh, the last one. So you just got to <laughs> stop comparing yourself to your friends, who some of which are probably envious of the freedom that you have. Yeah. yeah. Don't That's project good. my things. I'm sure I do project project things that I'm not even really thinking about that I do without realizing yeah. it. I get a sense that you do and that's totally fine, but don't be afraid I just, to, to look into that. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Okay. All right. Best well, of luck. Fun. Have yeah, fun. Have fun. Us. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right, Betsy. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye guys. Rachel, this has been so much fun. So much fun. I'm so glad we got to do this. We we need to have like quarterly talks yeah. at a minimum. Yeah. We need you're, to do You're this. always but, welcome back on the Vile Files. Yes. Hopefully it's not as heavy of a topic. I know. But but, but we hey, can just have fun. It's fine. Um, I really appreciate it. Can you, you bring me – wait, wait, really quickly. Can you bring me on to talk about – I've never watched seasons that you were on prior. 
So when they do this Bachelor Greatest Seasons Ever, I'm sure one of the seasons has come on. Can you bring me on to talk so I can give my opinion about you? Fuck yeah! I think we I think <laughs> we are gonna recap the recaps. I don't yeah, know. So like, I want to. I've never seen you in that way. I only know you from being on your season and beyond. So can't I can't wait. Have, yeah, you have back. to bring me on. It'd be great. Don't hold back. You know. I mean, my it's a it'll be fun. Um, <laughs> Thank you for coming on, Rachel. And thank you uh, uh, all for listening. We appreciate it. Thank you for uh, taking the time to listen, learn. Um, I hope you found this helpful and fun, obviously, but on the top half of the show, uh, educational. And uh, if you are someone who, you know, have have thought while listening to this, maybe you've said something or done something that you thought is ignorant, it's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but like we make mistakes and that's okay. And we can learn from it. And that's, I I think, the goal. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully we're all better for it. So uh, with that being said, uh, appreciate listening uh, and check us out on Wednesday. Have a great day.